it says we're live, but you know. Oh, is that, well, we know how these someone things are. Is commenting. Um, looks like uh, Reverend James has said, "Yay, this is just the green room, Reverend. We're yes. going to just uh, shoot the breeze for ten minutes before we actually start the show." Yes, yes, we like that. But I'm glad you made a comment because it shows that we can actually see comments, and I'm supposed to be able to bring them in. And yes, uh, Stephen, you can't see this, but I have uh, moved the comment into the screen, and now everyone who's watching can see it. And, that is lovely. And I think it's supposed to go oh, away by itself after 15 seconds, so we'll just... And of course, I put it right over your face, but it did go away by itself, so I don't have to... It's not something I have sure. to do is remember to take it away afterwards. And since yes. we do have somebody actually watching, why don't you say a few words so we can test our microphones and see if we can be heard? No, no, no. no. <laughs> don't sing. <laughs> Please don't sing. What? Don't ever sing. Don't doing? ever sing. How's that sound? Oh, okay. Well, I tried. <laughs> I tried and I've now my, my hopes and dreams have been irreparably ruined, but uh, this is this is it, I think. Oh, I shall be speaking. Hey, Greg is here. When did you guys start doing these? Well, this is the first one, Greg. Oh, uh, we've been doing <laughs> it for 10 weeks. 10 weeks, and you're just now tuning in. Now, this is yeah. episode two, and uh, I have a comment that says you might want to fix quote-unquote episode. Apparently, there's a misspelling. We're going to have to get to that later. Yes. Uh, I assume well, it's in the YouTube channel description or something like that. Yes. I'm, I'm going to share, uh, let's see. Yeah, test the microphones is what I was trying to do. It, uh, since I'm the one doing most of the talking right now, it, can everyone hear me okay? Yes, you can both be heard. All right. That is excellent. Uh, yes, because, you know, that's what we want to be is heard. Yes, it will become heard mentality. <laughs> Uh, it looks like you're drinking yellow juice. Uh, I was up to a second ago. And now it is gone? It is now consumed, yes. Now consumed. Is there anything you'd like to talk about in the green room that we're not going to talk about on the show? Or should we just do the show now and then call it off at 11? Or well, I'll tell noon, you something on the hour. That, I, that I found interesting. I saw just now, I don't know if it's still in effect, let me see. That it looks like there is a cold weather warning for my area. Uh, what does that mean for your area when it's generally about minus 22 Celsius anyway? Well, yes, it says it is currently minus 26, but feels like minus 33. It's those seven degrees that make the difference. That's, it's well, seven that's, degrees. So you have a wind chill factor that's bringing it down to. Yes. Yes, I think so, but it it all looks very, uh, very. Uh... Yeah, remember, you're backwards. Don't show us anything in writing. Does this help? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. So anyway, so yeah. So that will be exciting. It'll be nippy, as the kids say. So uh, minus thirty-seven. You're you're talking Celsius. Is about minus thirty-five yes, in Fahrenheit. Yes. And, uh, yes, minus 37. Uh, my under, sorry. My understanding is that the two um, temperature systems that we have both meet at minus 40. So if you get down to minus 40, in Fahrenheit it'll be minus 40. So that's that's the goal here, is we want you to be minus yeah. 40. Well, I've had that, and that was interesting, I can say. I went out for a walk yesterday, my ears still hurt. I don't believe it was frostbite, but I was getting close, so I had to curtail my walking activities. It was one of your walks in the woods, was it? Yes, it was. And I was not wearing adequate headwear, apparently. Wow. In other words, your ears were not covered. They were uncovered, yes. Yeah, well, don't make Flopping that mistake up. again. No, I don't. I won't. I you shan't. Don't, you won't. You oh. shan't. I assume you have something to cover your ears with. Or something One. with which to cover your ears. I could wear a tea towel. You could do anything other than not wear something to cover your ears. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, that's all I have. What about you? I've got nothing. I'm just waiting for the show to start. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, I could talk about pens, but we should save that for the show. Yeah, we should. We should. The sun is shining here, but it's probably about 34 the degrees. Shining. Yeah, yeah. The weather is sweet. Isn't that a song? I think that's a song. It is now because you just sang those words. Yeah, it is indeed. Copyright yes. Stephen Brown. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's that. I feel like it's not that easy. I don't think you just simply singing something. Well, not if it belongs to somebody else, of course. You, you might have just copyright... Uh, <laughs> violated copyright is what you've done, Dr. Brown. Yeah, Thank you yes, very much. We're yeah, going oh, to no, end the show true. right now. Yes, yeah. <laughs> We're getting a copyright strike from YouTube. Um, I, I know we'll probably talk about this during the podcast, but uh, over the we talked yesterday and your classes at the college were still scheduled to continue. Is that correct? They are scheduled to continue, but I think that has now been updated to it looks like we will all do classes on Monday and Tuesday because at that point I, for example, have seen all the sections of all the courses that I'm teaching right now and then we'll move online. Yeah, I was so, going to suggest you, you make a phone call and say, look, people. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we can, no, we I can think do it online. Let's do it online because apparently everybody yeah. else is. So, I mean, there are many, many things to consider. We we also have students who are immune compromised, and we have students who are pregnant, and you don't want to. Uh, right. well, make me uh, one of the things you said yesterday is uh, that Red Deer itself is rather sparsely populated and remote, but I don't think that's making much of a difference anymore. I don't think so. <clears throat> so. I think it is wise to just do this and just uh, yeah. at some point someone has to pull the trigger. That's always the hard part. Like someone has well, to say, I think... The person in charge should do that. Yes. I understand yes. you know this person. Yeah, so yeah, if, yeah. No. If this person happens to ask your opinion, I suggest you tell them what I say. Yeah. How's that? Well, basically the statement has been that it's 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 being closely monitored and the, the government of Alberta has not said schools or anything along those lines needs to close down. So... Then it kind of becomes um, yeah. Discretion. Every, everybody gets to decide for themselves. But. Yeah, yeah. So I understand that. I understand that decision. It's just that. So now what happens is that most groups are speaking. So the psychology group has said, "Let's do Monday and Tuesday because some people already had in-class tests scheduled on Monday, and if you have to move that online, and there's a panic, and that won't work." So there are a lot of ins and outs, right. but. Um, we shall move but through. you do have the ability to do online classes, and uh, oh yeah, you're no, about I've, to I've finish done... the semester or whatever it is you use. Yeah, yeah that's so... true. So there are options, and I mean, I have, I, I, I may have some experience recording videos, so that's convenient sometimes. You know, um, I just touched my face, but I had washed my hands. Yes, I've washed my hands too. Yeah, yeah. We will count the number of times that each of us. Wa- yeah, yeah, no, we are. Us, yeah, we are. And let us know how yeah. many times we. Will touch our face because we're going to tell everybody not to touch your face yes exactly we have um people uh in comments uh 40 people watching we've got and the show hasn't even started yet (laughs) i know i know and And this is always the best we have an international crowd Uh, we're getting greetings from the uk from spain from belgium um so that's fun all of I, I hope we make it worth their while. I hope they understand this is just the pre-show. We're just chatting for the moment to make sure the system is working. We're trying to entertain each other, not necessarily you. No. <laughs> but we, we, we try, we try to be inclusive. Well, you especially are very trying. Oh, yes, I am. It's been, uh, it's been said. Yes. Several times. Yeah. Yes, yes. I'm drinking water from a coffee cup. How do you like that? Let me show you something. This is a catalog. A catalog of all the times you've been trying? Of anatomical... uh, Well, we can't even... We can't even... With anatomical models. How do you like them apples? How do you like them apples? I I find it... I think I'll ask you a little bit something about the brain during the show. We'll get there. But uh, if I forget, which I likely will... Yes. Um, uh, I think next week is like Brain Appreciation Week, or did you just make that up? Yes, it is. Oh, it's brain. it's definitely something. Yeah. Okay. It is. So I have already, I have already. Um, what do you call that? I've already made my preparations for that. All right. Well, it's good to know that you're covering our brains, <laughs> and that you prepared. somehow made brain. Well, yeah, that's all tie into the the. The thing I want to talk about, uh, the thing I want to ask oh. you about regarding brains. Oh. Um, so yeah. well, that'll good. lead right into it. It is now the top of the hour. Shall we start the show? We may as well. I'll start the show with a little video, and you'll know that the video is finished when I start talking again, because, Dr. Brown, you won't be able to see the video. Here we go. Yes,
this is Is That a Pet in Your Podcast, episode number two for Sunday, March 15th, 2020. We are streaming to you live from the United States and Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, viewers the world over, thank you for joining us today and welcome to an exciting episode of what I like to call Fountain Pen Television. My name is Eric and with me today on his very own YouTube channel, the Tweedledum to my Tweedledee, Professor Dr. Stephen Brown. Hey there. Hey there. Hey there. How are you, Dr. Brown? Haven't talked to you in I'm forever. I am rather well. I am rather well. How about you? I'm excellent. Uh, doing well. Thank you very much. Uh, it's about time we met each other in a podcast. Why have we never done this before? Uh, I don't know. There was a time. There was a time when we could have done this? And uh, there was a time when we did. And there was a time we could have. And there was a time we didn't. <laughs> Will you continue along those lines, would you please? Oh, I pull up a document. Um, oh, yes. I don't know. Did we ever do this before? It feels like it, but it feels like it was a lifetime ago. Something feels familiar about it, but I'm not sure what it is. Um, yes. But it's, it's good to be here. It's good to see you. Good to talk to you. We have a crowd watching us. Um, crowd. An international crowd of uh, the most brilliant people on the planet. I think we should start the show by uh, saying that this show is certified COVID-19 free. Isn't that correct? You certified it as such, being a professor and a doctor. Yes, yes. yes. We have disinfected all surfaces. And we do not touch the camera. Uh, and since we're talking about COVID, uh, is there anything we would like to say about that? I mean, this this is not a podcast about COVID-19, but it is certainly being talked about everywhere. So we might as well say, don't touch your face, wash your yeah. hands, and, yeah. and stay away from people, I guess. Um, yeah. Uh, I know and we... find, you know, you have to, it's, it's a serious matter, but you have to really try and keep your wits about you. Disinfect your hands. Keep some distance from people. Don't cough into each other's faces. It's a serious matter, but that's that's it. Be be careful and look for solutions. So, for example, now every time I want to touch my face, I just touch his face. Yeah, so cool. you know you can. Well, I did. I did. I did say we need a a face toucher, some finger on yeah. a stick, like a back scratcher, but a, a face toucher that we just keep yes. handy. But I haven't actually made the prototype yet. Dip in alcohol and then. Yeah, or um, spritz it, spritz it with alcohol yeah. and then scratch your eye, see what happens. Yeah. But yes, everybody right. remain calm, wash your hands, don't touch your face, stay away from people. I yeah. know we have um, at least one person uh, in our audience uh, that is in Spain uh, that is uh, currently in lockdown. Uh, so yeah. perhaps this will provide some isolationist entertainment of some That's fashion. needed relief. I'm sorry, I didn't catch Because there's one thing we can provide, it's I, comic relief. Isn't it? Oh, I wasn't going to say that. I was going to say, well, I said entertainment, and maybe that is even too much to ask for between the two of us. But speaking of I, speaking of things anatomical, uh, yes. uh, next week is uh, Brain Appreciation Week. Yes, next week is Brain, I think it's officially Brain Awareness Week. Okay, uh, Brain Awareness. Which is that, that you are aware that you have a brain. Some people aren't, and uh, some people are. So I think that will be fun. There is a um, short series of videos scheduled by me. They are not public yet. And they shall be revealed one a day for the entire Brain Awareness Week about the brain, talking about the brain. So uh, what you're saying, if I did my math correctly, you've got five videos? Are you doing Monday through Friday or, six, or seven? Okay, six? All seven, uh, every seven, day. Seven yes. Brain Awareness videos. Uh, are, are they each 90 minutes long, Dr. Brown? No, okay. they are not each 90 minutes long. In fact, most of them, I think, if not all of them, are under 10 minutes. Some are even under five minutes. I try to keep really short little snippets of fun brain things. Excellent. Like, what is it? That will be, what? that will be very digestible. Yes, that was my, my intention. And um, uh, any, any preview on those? Like, uh, don't miss Wednesday well, because it's going to talk about the amygdala. Here's a brain. Well, here's a for preview. <laughs> Fry that up and serve it for lunch. Yes, the live the live preview is this is a frontal lobe, this is a parietal lobe, this is an occipital lobe, and this is a temporal lobe. But how do you know where one starts and the others and the other ends? We have you tell us. That's how. Yeah, exactly. Right. Right. There are specific there are specific grooves. So to see this, you need to watch the oh, video, fantastic. and then you... all right, all right. And do you, uh, since I won't let this go, apparently, will you be releasing or making these public on uh, at a specific time every day? 
Yes, I think they are scheduled for 11, but I don't know 11 in what time zone. So 11 in the morning. Usually, I think that is about my time. So I think that will be right now. It's uh, nine o'clock. No, it's 10 o'clock here. No, it's five. No, it's 10 o'clock here. 10 o'clock here. So it should would be an hour after this because an hour after 10 is 11. Usually in most time zones. Yes. So what you're saying is... Uh, we don't know about anything anymore. One, but that, one, 1 p.m. Eastern I time. <laughs> you know, Tell we're, you. We're going to have to get you a headset. Yeah. We're going to have to get you a headset. But speaking of the brain, because you brought it up. Um, yeah, if, yes. if I were to use the initials B, D, N, F, yes. would you know what I'm talking about? And In a nutshell. Don't, don't, yeah. don't make up an acronym for those. Tell me what they really stand for. Are you, are you scared? Yes. Are you scared? Because I opened the door for that one. No, yes, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. All right, and this is uh, what trophic. what some people call miracle grow for the brain. Yeah. Okay, uh, and why do they call it the miracle grow for the brain? Well, neurotrophic brain-derived neuro. See, it's hard to pronounce. Brain-derived neurotrophic factor, hence BDNF, uh, is a protein. It's a protein uh, that kind of gets released when a specific gene, which conveniently is also called BDNF, activates and then sort of gives a signal to activate that protein. And it's it it, it does a lot of things. So we can spend, I'm now only touching my glasses, not my head. Um, uh, you can basically spend an entire podcast, I would say, on just BDNF. You can probably spend a whole series of podcasts on, on BDNF, but in a nutshell, it is a growth factor, and that's a really strange term, but the factor just means that it's like a chemical, right? So it's a chemical, actually not even like a chemical, it's a chemical, it's a protein, and uh, it, it does certain things in the brain. So, for example, you are born with pretty much all the, the brain cells you need, and yet there are a very few number of brain areas that can still create new brain cells after you were born. But those cells kind of need to proliferate, need to grow little little extensions to uh, connect to other brain cells. And BDNF is a, is a protein that actually helps with that, helps with that proliferation, helps with making the little connections. So in other words, it adds to your brain's ability to be plastic, to show plasticity and, and kind of change itself. In little my ways. brain is plastic? I don't think you're using that in the way we usually use the word plastic. But See? my point it's is... Plastic. My point is that BDNF is very important for your brain. It's good to have. Yeah. Yes. What I heard on the radio, and the reason I wanted to ask you, is someone who wrote a book says mm -hmm. that exercise will help trigger BDNF in your brain. Is this true? Do you know anything about that? I have not really heard that, but I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it is, just because we know that exercise does a lot of good things for your brain. Aerobic exercise is associated with better aging, probably because your brain uses a lot of oxygen. And if you just sort of make sure that your brain gets very nice, healthy dosages of oxygen, that's good for your brain. Okay. So, But so, you've but, never heard that exercise actually helps with BDNF. No, but then again, I've never really looked into it. So, I mean, there is, I mean, brain, you, you would need, again, you would, in as I... My understanding, let me put it that way, is that you need to activate a gene to activate BDNF. So you would have to exercise to activate a gene. And I don't know how how plausible that is, but I suppose that that in theory, exercise is not a, is not a bad thing. Just like eating good food is not a bad thing, right? Healthy food is better than junk food. This, this stands to reason. So I would, I'm not saying that he's not right or she's not right. Um, I'm just saying that that I I am not personally familiar with the claim. That, that no, no, no. And I don't expect you to be familiar with every claim. But that is as as you know, as often happens, I'll read something or hear something about the brain, and the first person I go to is you. To yeah. say, have you ever heard of this? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Blah blah blah. So yeah, no. I, I, I just I, wanted I, to know that, uh, and actually, <laughs> I don't know why I needed to know it on the air, but I thought I would because next week, as you know, is Brain Awareness Week. Brain Awareness Week. So what? What a week, right? Yeah, what what a, a time week. to be alive. Um, and I haven't. Uh, we haven't done a podcast since January. You've had a birthday since then. Did you have a happy birthday? I did have a happy birthday. Are you? Yep. Are you twenty-one finally? I'm finally 21 for the, uh, I don't know, 10th or 9th tenth time. 10th or 9th you have to do the math. Well, congratulations. Happy yeah. birthday. It's nice to have you with us. Oh, okay. It's going to take a lot. It's going to take a while. Since January, I think you've stayed in Red Deer. You've not traveled? 
Yes, this is correct. This is correct. Whereas I, you know, have been to New York and Philadelphia. Yeah, well, um, some of us are metropolitan and others are not, <laughs> right? Um, Philadelphia, I went to the Philadelphia Pen Show. Uh, and I'm trying to scratch my nose, but I can't touch my face. You so I'm using touch my your face, that's all. I'm, I've got a box of Kleenex here, so if, if you want to touch our faces, well, my Kleenex won't help you, but uh, I'll send you one of those finger scratchers. Yes, you know? yes, yes, thank you. Um, so you went, I went to the Philadelphia Pen Show, um, and I actually got a pen. So, oh, look, we're is. finally talking about a pen. What is it? It only yeah. took us 11 minutes to get to a pen. Um, Penderized perfect factor. <laughs> I got a, and I do have a picture, but before I show a picture, I would just hold it up. Uh, it is a shown design, Pocket 6, he calls it. Uh, he calls it a Pocket 6, not because it is six inches either capped or open, but because it has a number six nib on it. So nice. it's not a tiny nib. Of course, I put a Franklin Christoph flexible nib on it because that's how I am. Um, I how will you... see about putting a picture of this here. <laughs> there we go. I think there, that's a picture of my actual pen right there. It's next to, Dr. Brown can't see this, of course, but everyone else can. It's, it's I I'm put it next to quarters mind. so that people could see it. Um, what a lovely little pocket pen. It's all metal. Um, just to, Is it heavy? No. I mean, it's tiny, so it's not heavy. Um, but, well, if it would be copper, it would be heavy. Well, uh, he makes brass ones, and I imagine they are much heavier than... Uh, it's brass. This yeah, one I always one. mix up those. Uh, the uh, section is brass on mine. Does it smell weird? I haven't smelled it. I'm not a Ziza. <laughs> we'll just long pause there. Long pause. Yes, yes, yes. No, this is fair. It, it, well, it, the nice thing about the brass section, it will disinfect itself. Oh, oh explain that. What are you talking about? Well, it's it because it sort of, it, it kills viruses. So at this at this point in time, you have, you have the best, I should, well, I should, virus, I'm not talking, bacteria. Instead of hand sanitizer, I should use brass and just rub it yeah, all Yeah, you, you should just rub your pen between your fingers like that. And, and that will, the uh, section is brass. Well, then you have to move around a bit. Move around a bit. Now, um... I thought I had, I do have, um, I stole a couple of pictures from Shown Design uh, on their Instagram uh, because black is not the only color these come in. They come in all kinds of fun, lovely colors. And uh, this, this pen never leaves my pocket except, you know, right now I'm sitting down and doing a podcast. So I thought I would uh, take it out of my pocket, but it is a perfect carry everywhere pen. And then you have is it. Is a pen in your pocket? It's, is that a pen in your pocket? Careful. Careful. Um, it's a knife. Plus, I have, uh, I have something unusual for the States, anyway. I have a red carbonesque uh, vanishing point, and I know it's hard to see things when you hold them in front of the camera. I think I have a photo of it somewhere, so I'll just put that on the screen. Uh, I... Uh, the Carbonesque models of Vanishing Points have been available in uh, black and I think blue. I have a blue one. Uh, a red one was a surprise to me. It's apparently not available in North America, or at least in the United States. And this one uh, just showed up on my door one day because, um, well, because Eleanor, you know Eleanor. Eleanor just, she was buying one for herself uh, from overseas and said, I'm going to send one to Eric because she's a wonderful human being. And so now that's also sitting here, and that's that's the one that stays in my backpack. So I have one in my pocket, and I have one in my backpack. And uh, you know, so you basically have pens in pockets, backpacks. <laughs> backpacks. Yeah, and I'm, pens I'm, I'm kind of a pen person, you know. So yes, but I understand you have a new pen too. In fact, <clears> I, I yes, think I it was a birthday pen. It was a birthday pen sent to me by Yost Appleboom. Oh yeah, hashtag Yost. hashtag boom hashtag Appleboom. Um, <clears throat> that looks like uh, is it yes go on Leonardo something uh, Maestro yes. something something or other is it Leonardo Messinger yes <laughs> yes Messinger uh, sort of oh I think it's a caramel they call it caramel I believe so I nearly dropped it but I have it don't worry about it <laughs> well it would be the first time cough so, into your elbow please yes I did I, I tried and he sent it to me because I turned I turned <clears throat> 35 and it's uh, it actually is number 36 for my for my 36th oh, year on yes planet. because this is your 36th march 15th on the planet so 
No, I can't yes. see it. And besides, you're mirrored, so stop showing us things yeah, that we're exactly. supposed to read. But I do have a picture of it. Uh, I don't know which one this is. Uh, this is it's just a a, this is the product shot of the pen, and so it's lovely on a white background, and looks very caramely. And it is. And then I think I have a picture of your actual pen. There it is. You sent me a picture of your actual pen, and uh, it is also quite lovely. And the nice table you have there. Good lighting. Yes. Uh, yep. Kudos Some to your things. photographic skills there, Dr. Brown. Oh yeah, known for that. Known for that. Known for photographic skills? Oh, yeah. Uh, what kind of nib is on the Leonardo? It is a number six nib. It is a plastic feed. It is a steel broad. Okay, so it's a steel nib, which means this is an affordable pen. It is pretty affordable, and I think that's really nice. And that's one of the things I really appreciate about Leonardo. Yes, there. Celluloid models are more expensive, but those are celluloid and piston film and all that stuff. But their their cartridge converter acrylic models are really not that bad, I think, and they are handmade in Italy. And that's uh, no. I, I think did we mention what what is the filling system on this pen? The filling system on this pen is a cartridge converter. Okay. Does it come with a converter? It did come with a converter. Okay. Well, I, I don't know the price point on this pen, but I imagine it is affordable and it's very pretty. So, oh, I didn't, I didn't bother to look it up, but uh, but but yeah, I will review it obviously, and then I shall also mention the price. Oh, will you do that for us? Oh, uh, let me. I will do it. I'll write that on my calendar. When will that be out? Yes, yes, I shall. I'll write yeah. that on my calendar. When will that be out? Oh, it will be out uh, somewhere probably at this point. I think I have some videos uh, scheduled still. It was uh, it was probably a rhetorical question, Doctor Brown. Oh no! Now, you, now you're going to get it. It's going to be somewhere in June. Somewhere in June. Okay. Somewhere in June. I will set a calendar. Uh, I'll mark my entire month of June in my calendar. Yeah, you should. To watch should. for the Leonardo Messenger. Yeah, yeah. There are. Some... I can also say. I can also say very quickly as we're talking about new products. I got some items in yesterday uh, from the company. I'm going to say Lochby, but it's probably Lochby. Um, which makes Lochby. Yes, L O C H, and uh, I particularly enjoy this tool roll. Want to buy some pens? So you can sort of unroll this, and and I kind of like it. And it's it feels I haven't I haven't looked into this much. It feels very rugged. It feels like a canvas material. That's uh, sold as a um, tool pouch, but you plan to put yeah, pens in it. But you can put you can put pens in it even as little slots for little notebooks, field oh, okay. field notes type notebooks. Let me guess, you'll be doing a review on these products. I will do that absolutely, probably in June. June or July, something so, like that. Mark June in your calendar. It's going to be a busy month. But you just got these yesterday, so you're not really familiar just, with them. I don't really have an uh, have an opinion on them yet, except that the first opinion is uh, is really quite favorable. I like this industrial look and multiple notebooks and things and. Oh, nice. they, they sell the notebooks too? Yes, because they're they're Lochby branded as well. Okay, and where is Lochby located? Um, somewhere in the world. Oh, very I good. think Emory serves. It's in the U.S. It's in the U.S. It's not a, a name that I'm familiar with. Well, that's your fault. I mean, I Obviously. can't. I can't or perhaps it. theirs. Maybe they're not on social media. Of course. You no, know. I don't. I, I, I think they may be actually. Uh, I was I was contacted by them, and I simply haven't had time to really look into the brand, so I I'm utterly uninformed. Uh, they are on social media. I've just started to follow them. You should follow them too. I will immediately. And I think they are. Uh, I think it's a very nice product because it looks rugged, and I really like that. That it's a solid product. Rugged yet refined. Rugged yet refined for those uh, the what those long walks you take in the country. Yes. Or the I woods. My ears off. Where is it you walk? Yes. You walk in the woods. Is there a path there, or are you making new there trails? Okay, there's a path. Yeah. Yes. There is a path. Do you do you ever run across a moose? I have run across a moose a three times but they've all been either females or cubs which is preferable to bull moose because bull moose are um, to be avoided to be avoided now are... you you call a baby moose a cub is that correct or did you just make that up 
I would say about 93% of the things I say are made okay, up on the okay, spot. Okay. So I, I'm I, not that familiar with meat. Uh, yes, one yeah. moves to meat. This we know. But uh, <laughs> I, I'm not, wouldn't they be calves or something to do with four-legged creatures or foal? Or <laughs> we're gonna have to foal, something else. Foal. We don't know. We will look that up. Yeah, we will look that up. Um, I think, what is that thing called again? The male moose, they have the thing. We looked that up at some point under their chin. Isn't that a waddle? I mean, on a chicken, it's a waddle. A, no, it had a name. It had a name. All right. You're, gonna, you're going to look it up right now, aren't you? Well, the I, the yeah, entire I planet will pause while you look up the, the moose, I, I, moose waddle. Search for five, moose waddle. If somebody in the comments yeah, knows what a no, moose waddle is. No. no. Uh, look at that moose. And you'll see a long dangly thing hang. Oh, what's this going? Oh, hanging from their chin. Okay. Glad, glad to know that. Uh, it, blah, blah, blah. It's called a bell or dew lap. A dew lap. Yes. Yes. A dew lap. Now I recall our and conversation. Scientists do not know what it's for. <laughs> Shame. Well, it's to lap up the dew, apparently. It's a dew lap. No, that's not how you spell it, people. Now I want to see how this, what a baby oh, moose. What is the a name for a baby moose? A male moose is called a bull. A female moose is called a cow. And a young moose is called a calf. Calf, all right. All right. A group of moose is called a herd. And in Europe, a moose is called an elk. Yes, yes. Okay, we are fully now. <laughs> <coughs> we can be very uh, conversant on the subject of meese at this point. Oh, yes. Think, uh, well, now, what is the? I'm I'm really going to just change the subject. You showed me a pen yesterday. Yeah. Yes, Not this hole. <laughs> and put the brain out. Of put the, the brain out of the way. You showed me a different right. pen. There. That's the one. What do you? What did you call that pen? This is a Wing Sung six hundred and ninety nine. Okay, and what is fascinating about this pen, other than the fact that uh, it holds a lot of ink? It is basically a Pilot Custom A23. Basically, with, the, with a steel uh, nib. With a steel nib and with the vacuum filler, which I shan't be operating, given the oh, fact please. that... Oh, just point it at the camera and... Yeah, never mind. Now, don't do it. Don't do it. You'll regret it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll definitely regret it. So, yeah, so it's a, a copy. Right, because it's there are some minor differences, but it's the same filling system. It's I think if you were to look at this from a distance, you would say, "Oh, I had custom A two three. And you have it inked up, so it means you've been using it. Yeah, and it's a fun. <clears throat> do you like it? I like some things about it. Oh, are you uh, going to review it? Uh, I shall review it. Yeah, in June. Yes, in June. It's a fine nib, as you can see, right? Um, <clears throat> and it's uh, it's fine. It's fine. It's a fine, fine. Excellent. Yeah, it's a fine nib. It's, it's a little feedbacky, but it is very fine. Now, tell Some me, would say tell me Dr. Problem. Brown, did you just write the word fine backwards for us? I don't know. Did I? I don't know. That was, now you'll never know. That, Look that, at was, all that. that was pretty good work. You have these things where you, where you suddenly get an existential crisis. Like, okay, I, t I teach sensation and perception. You look at the world. The image of the world is projected upside down on your retina, but then your brain must convert it into yes, right side exactly. up. Why do you, that's what they is that That's what they teach us anyway. Does that mean that the whole world is upside down? You never knew it. Woo! Existential crisis. And that doesn't cause me a crisis because gravity only works one yeah. way in my, in my experience. Well, that's 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 just that's like because I, I don't have a lot of experience. That's right. <laughs> no, but that's, that's the, the way it is, yeah. So it's it's interesting, right? We have to think about it. But yes, I did write that. Yeah, it was very good. You, because you were talking while you did it, and then you held it up, and I said, oh, no, he's going to do that again. Hey, wait a minute, I can read it. Wow, he's good. He's really yeah, good. You, I, you're going to have to rewatch like that. It's part of my job. I'm going to put another slide up here that you won't be able to see, but it's the that new platinum pen that is everywhere on the planet except North America, oh, yeah. apparently. And I think we're going to pronounce it Curidas. Kuridas. Yeah, something like that. And it it's I'm just gonna call it Platinum's version of the vanishing point because it's got the clicky and a retractable nib. Uh, and they look really nice. Uh, I like the colors. I like the price point. 
Um, the price point it's is possible. low and has a steel nib. Um, I, I think they have pushed back the release in North America by another 30 days. Um, so they won't be here until April, middle of April. But I think everybody's waiting for them. Because yeah, I think so. this this is you are back on on the I've taken the slide down now so um, ah. I'm anxious to try one I'm anxious to see one and hold one and and it looks very to me it looks very fat like a I mean, very it does look fatter uh, for instance than a vanishing point yes um, the uh, I used to say the uh, they call it the knock but the the button to Yes. Work the nib looked like it was far too long, but then I looked at a vanity point and I said, "Well, that's pretty long too." So I, you know, I, I won't be able to help comparing it to a vanishing point because no, and even I mean, even when you look at it, curadas is actually Latin for retracting nib. So of course it is. Of course, ninety three percent. So so that's from a Japanese uh, yeah. pen company. Yes, that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's what they went for. So I look forward to holding one because it looks. It also, to me, looks very plasticky. Well, I'm positive it's made of plastic. Yeah, that's probably why. <laughs> but the question is, does it feel? Does it feel cheap? Uh, or does it feel like a so? Because I, I, this, this is always a discussion I have with people. In my mind, there are cheap plasticky feels, and there are nicer plasticky feels. I don't know if it's just me. Well, probably. No, I mean. Judging by your look, no. There, it's not just you. There, this is definitely. It has to do with the manufacturing. I mean, uh, precious yeah. resin has got to be some kind of a plastic, but it is yeah. the world's nicest plastic. Yes, uh, it does. Feel and good. and uh, Curry Doss is not going to have that kind of quality, but it's not going to have nearly that price tag either. No, exactly. So currently, they're they're selling in the states for eighty dollars, and it includes a uh, now it includes a, a converter, but uh, eighty dollars is a nice price point. And I just don't price point. I, I yeah. almost think that uh, for eighty dollars, it can feel a little plasticky. Yeah. As long as it functions, yeah, yeah, yeah. it can't fall apart in your hand. No. So basically, basically half the price of a vanishing point. Uh, so uh, it's not metal and it doesn't have a gold nib, but it's half the yeah. price. Well, maybe at some point there will be some sort of gold nib upgrade. Possibly. I be possibly. What I what I will say is that as if you're speaking only to convenience, the vanishing point can, or a retractable fountain pen cannot be beat. Yeah, I know. Because you don't have to do anything with the Pencil. cap. And it well, does, uh, if you want to use a fountain pen, a retractable fountain pen can't be beat. Yeah, well then, well then yeah. 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 Uh, I don't know if any of your students use fountain pens. Occasionally it happens. And, and they do they use the a retractable? I, 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 I found a video on YouTube and I'm like, oh, there we go. <laughs> it happens. It happens, it happens. No, that's pretty cool. Look forward to that one. Yeah, the look, forward to, look forward to holding it and seeing it and feeling what the proportions are like. The other uh, thing, a pen that I'm looking forward to, also a very affordable pen, but has caught my attention, is a new one coming from Faber Castell, which is the Hexo. Hexo. I think I made you look at some pictures of the Hexo yesterday. Um, yeah. I couldn't find any pictures uh, because it's not here yet. And I didn't want to steal any pictures, but I went to Faber Castell's website and I stole their video, and then I edited it down because their video was way too long. And so I'll just play that right now. So you won't be seen, and you won't see the I video, but I'll play it. Uh, but uh, we can still be heard while it's playing. And what I like about it is that it is aluminum, so it's all metal. I'm not sure about the section. The section probably isn't. Well, I don't know yet. Uh, and that's on the fountain pen. It's black. It comes in black, silver, and I think what they're calling a rose gold color. The all black is pretty stealth pen. I like the fact that it's faceted. It's got six sides. I think they're subtle, but they're there. Uh, for in my case, I like the, and we are back on the air. People can see you now, Dr. Brown. Um, I like, everyone needs a ballpoint, and this is a ballpoint that I'm going to get. I like the silver ballpoint. Uh, I do know the pricing on these. The fountain pen is forty dollars. The roller ball is thirty-five, and the the ballpoint is going to be thirty. So these are very nice. Um, I'm going to say inexpensive pens. With the, I, I don't I know agree. that they're completely inexpensive if you compare them to a Bic, but 
it's really a nice price point for. Uh, uh, yeah, I because, assume they're going to be well-made pens. Usually, Faber Castell is nice. I, uh, I I have not really seen a bad Faber Castell pen yet. No, and I mean they don't, have they don't always speak to me. Love. I don't always like the aesthetics of all their pens, but uh, yeah. some pens I really do. And of course, their perfect pencil is is yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Something I'll never own, but I really like it. I, I like Faber Castell products, and so yeah. I'm waiting for this ballpoint. Well, I think I think that this is uh, basically if Yoast is watching, there's a running shopping list. There's a Curidas we need to be sent. We need a we need a Hexo. You need a ballpoint, and you know I'm just just no no pressure. I'm just saying that that's how it will have to be. Continue. Continue. Where was I going? Now I have to change the subject, don't you? You needed an exit on that. I want to talk about field notes. Are you aware of field notes? I'm aware of field notes. I've, um, I've sometimes I drive to Calgary and there's fields of them growing. Fields you of see fields, them all. the fields of notes. Yeah. Yeah, those, are, those are musical notes, right? No, I'm not talking oh, about that. I'm yes. talking about the notebooks made by field notes, which I have never really paid much attention to because I, I'm not I'm I'm not the fan of that size because they're usually uh, practically yeah, a they, six size. Again, sorry, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not pushing. No, you're sharing. We like that. Why right? is about, it's about this size, I think. Right. Those, those are a little too small for me, but they've come out with something called, they're calling group 11. Uh, let me see if I can find a picture of group 11. Uh, let's try this. Yes. Um, so uh, it's gold, it's silver, it's copper. Um, and what I like is that, Why don't you tell us what you like about it, what you don't like I about think it? And then we'll do a writing sample. Well, uh, yeah. I think what really caught my eye about these was that they gilded the edges of the paper. The gold That's one cool. has gold on the edges, and the copper has copper, and the silver has silver. And for some reason, that really caught my eye. And then the attention to detail, they even did the staples that hold the book together. The gold one has gold staples, the silver one has a silver staple, and so forth and so on. Question, are they solid gold staples? No, they are not. I, I can't imagine that they are. Um, a shame. And we're back on here now, I've stopped sharing uh, pictures, but I've never had an occasion to try a notebook that small, but I did get myself some Field Notes Group 11, and so I just wanted to share that with everybody because I think they're fantastic. I think I think the um, I I have not really used a whole lot of them. I've used them a few times, and I think the main the main benefit to them is that they're so portable. They will fit in your back pocket. They will fit in any backpack, anywhere, somewhere. There's a, there's a space or a slot for you that. You know, I'm going to say they're they're. I don't have my backpack, so I'm going to say they're passport size. Yeah, they're exactly. Close to being that's... passport size. Super convenient. So in that regard, my, my I think my initial I had at some point was that they are not super fountain pen friendly. Now that's that's they they have not necessarily been designed for that, but that that was my main issue with them. Yeah, but, I, I can't say that they are or they aren't uh, at this point. But I don't always. I don't. No, I don't always exactly. use a fountain pen. Um, yeah, no, no, and and I think that's but that's a fair point. Like you can also not say, well, they're not found to be friendly, so it's a bad product. It's just right. that's, it's, made, that's not, it's not meant. That's not true for me it. anyway. If it, some people, I yeah. suppose, do use nothing but a fountain pen, but yeah, or, or mechanical pencils or whatever. I do, I so do, I mean, I do always they keep are, a mechanical pencil. <laughs> yeah, there you go. What what kind of, what kind of mechanical pencil is it? Oh, not it's, that it's I, the one with the lead, you know. Oh yeah, this is a Pentel, the... and uh, it is the 0 0.5 uh, millimeter. Oh, yes. That's a nice. I like 0 0.5. I like three, but the, yeah, the, the three didn't come in this color, and I wanted this color, so I made a, you know everything in life is, is a compromise. Doesn't that break really quickly? The 0.3? Well, it depends on how much pressure you put on the lead. Yeah, I'm known for my uh, my fine motor skills and my elegance, so usually I use 0.7. Oh, do you? Well, yeah, because you 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 push very a lot of pressure on the paper. Not on my fountain pens, but on, on mechanical pens. I don't know. Pens. I've seen you're right. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah, it's terrible. It's yeah. <laughs> every every nib is a flex nib once with me. Yeah. At least once. At least once. But uh, you know, speaking of field notes, I was thinking we would try to give. Uh, I've got a three pack here, right here. Yes. It's unopened. Uh, let's try. Is it open? It is not open. In fact, it no. is unopened. Right. I could open it, but then it wouldn't be like unopened. 
Let's, I know. We'll cut that right it's in. Fun, yeah, I was it. wondering if we wanted to do, what do you call that? A giveaway of some kind? A giveaway of some kind, yes. I think people would have to, and to someone in. would have to call in to do that, which means we'd have to give a phone number. Let's take our names away and see if we can put a phone number. If only we had a phone number to show people. There we go. Uh, I'm going to say uh, somebody should call. That phone number uh, will ring right to my cell phone. I'll pick up the phone and uh, we'll say three true or false questions, something like that. And uh, yep. you could win uh, this three pack of Field Notes Group 11. The phone number is on the screen. I'll read it to you. It's 1213-793-8009. When you send these out, will you disinfect them? I'll wipe them down with a, a disinfectant cloth, put them in an envelope, and give them to the post office. What happens to them at that point is anybody's... It's gotta be yeah, I, I, I can't take responsibility, but I, I did say that this the podcast is certified COVID-19 free. Uh, this uh, These will be uh, clean when I send them out. <laughs> if anybody calls, yes. you know, maybe nobody wants to talk to us. Hard to imagine. Well, we're scary. Do we still have viewers? Or are we not? This is an empty oh, room I, now. I haven't checked. Uh, is that, is that my, There's 81 maybe. people watching this. Holy Somebody crap. wants to call this phone number on the screen. I would think. I would think. <sighs> but, you know, we should probably talk about something else because as soon as we get I'm into a different subject. Understated at this point. If nobody calls, we go through all this effort. Nobody calls. Nobody we, calls. We, I'm we, keeping we, these. That's all there is to it. Yeah, that's right. I'm just kidding. Do you remember yesterday we tested it? Did I turn the phone on? And here, look at me. I'm just touching my... Wait, we have a phone call. We have a phone call. Oh. I'll have to answer and hit speaker and hope that I can hear you. Hello? Hello? Uh, this is Eric. Who's this? This is Julie Zuckerman. I'm Welcome sorry. Podcast. Did you say Julie? Yes. Julie, how are you today? Yes. I'm good. Are you ready to play a game for these field notes? Sure. Uh, let me ask the audience, can you hear Julie? Because I'm only, I've got her on speakerphone and I'm holding the phone. I'm sorry? You can hear Julie. Is it? Okay, okay. We're going to uh, assume that people can hear you, Julie. Julie, uh, I'm going to ask you a true or false question. All you have to say is true or false. But I've got topics. You can choose the topic. You can choose geography, world leaders, <laughs> Or fountain pens. What is your choice, Julie? Fountain pens. Fountain pens, all right. True or false, Julie? Fountain pens made by Mont Blanc are produced in Switzerland. True. I'm going to ask you that question again, Julie. Uh, I don't think I heard the answer. Fountain pens made by Mont Blanc are produced in Switzerland. True or false? True. No, I'm sorry. They're not produced in Switzerland. Uh, I clearly heard this. Uh, so, but it's okay. We, we, we will have a sudden death. Uh, but uh, okay. yeah, Good. we're going to go to number two now. I'm going to give you uh, okay. categories to choose from. You can choose um, geography, world leaders, or ink. Geography. Geography. Okay. Um, True or false, Julie? The Indian Ocean borders the west coast of Australia. True. Very good, very good, true. The, the ocean off the west coast of Australia is in fact called the Indian Ocean. She's got one right. She missed one, but we'll give her a second chance on that one. There is a third question. Uh, let's see if I have... Uh, I have... Three options for you for topics. You can have art, literature, or paper. 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 Uh, Leuchtturm, the company known for high-quality notebooks, available in many eye-catching colors, was established in 1916. True or false? True. True. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't think I heard the answer correctly. No, that's false. It was 1917. 1917. So, I thought it was 1917, but it was so yeah, close. So close. I that's, that was a dirty trick on my part because the name of the company is actually Leuchtturm 1917. And so if I had said that, and uh, okay. But it's okay. 
Um, you haven't won the field notes. You have won, if you're watching the program, a, a polishing cloth by Pilot that is a very nice polishing cloth. I will give this to you now, or you can answer okay. a sudden death question if you really want these field notes. Of course, I'd like the sudden death question. All right, let's find one. <laughs> I don't like my punk. <laughs> All right, I won't ask you a Mont Blanc question then. How's that? Okay, good. I appreciate it. How do you feel about literature? I'm going to ask you true or false about literature. And this is... F sure, that's great. This is for the field notes. Get it right, you get the field okay. notes. Get it wrong, and we'll send you the pilot polishing cloth. Um, true or false? It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Is the beginning of the first sentence of the novel Moby Dick. A tale of two cities. Aha, so you're saying false? False. All right. Um, I have your phone number on my screen, Julie. Congratulations, you have won the field notes. As soon as we wrap things up here, which will be shortly, I'll uh, give you a call back for your mailing address, because unless you want to give it over the phone, I mean, on, on, on air, but you don't. I will call you in a few minutes. How's that sound? That's great. Okay. I've enjoyed the podcast. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. So, Dr. Brown, so, uh, were you uh, awesome. able to hear all of that? You were able to hear all of that. I heard everything. Oh, right. I heard the whole thing. The whole thing. Everything. We, we did well. The whole Nothing but the truth, I heard, in fact. Nothing but the truth. The problem is that she couldn't hear you, so we'll have to see if we can work something out on that. Because you well, were, that's why I tried to shut up. You, you were not able to uh, assist when I, I misheard the Mont Blanc being made in Switzerland. Yeah. Yes, a shame. All right, but that was fun. I like that. Yep. I like uh, giving things away, and this is a nice thing to give away. Now I'm going to take away this phone number. I think I got like 15 phone calls while we were on the phone uh, with Julie. Yeah, well, uh, have to be fast. Frank, Act fast. Be France is calling now. The United Kingdom was calling while I was on the phone. A truly international uh, audience, which is fantastic. Um, it is. I, I hope we have been able to keep people entertained in their isolation. Yes. Um, troubled times. Troubled times. Uh, we're all in this together. Uh, take it day by day. Uh, try not to worry too much. Don't panic. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. I bet we've touched our face a hundred times during this program. A million, million times. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Maybe next time people can win something if they correctly predict how, how many, many times, times we touch our face. Touch our face. Uh, uh, that's all I have. Do you have anything else? Uh, no, I think that's it. I didn't do an end screen where, but it's your channel. You should probably ask people to like this video and subscribe to your channel. Yes, why don't you like this video and subscribe to this channel? Are we, we shall be again. Are we going to do this again? Well, that's up to us. Do the people, I <laughs> think the people should. Yeah, that's, I suppose that's true. Um, yes. Uh, <laughs> so the people should indicate whether they believe that this was entertaining enough to do again, because everybody says, wow, this was an utter waste of 43 minutes of my time. And I suppose it would be useless to do this again. If, on the other hand, people say, bugger me, mate, that's a grim story. And that was really interesting, right? <laughs> and, and we would do it again, right? Right. If people hate it, we'll do it again. If people hate it a lot, then we will yeah, definitely, definitely do, do it again. again. Of course, people. we're forcing people to watch this. Yeah, you are forced to watch. What else is there to do? The world has shut that's down. It's we might have to do this on a daily basis. I don't know. Yeah, we may have to. We we provide the much needed comic relief that people so desperately crave at this troubled time. But I think we're going to have to work on the comedy. But you know, we'll get better. I promise, we'll get better. I, I was pretty we, funny. We have, I mean, I I, yeah, looks aren't everything, Doctor Brown. But we've never done a podcast before, so this is pretty good for our first time. And I don't yeah. think either one of us have ever had a, a appeared on YouTube. So you know, this this was no, very nerve wracking. I've never video before, except the one time, but I try to not mention that <laughs> what, what i will say is that if we do this again we'll do it again next sunday at the same time kind of give yes you know, we should make this a regular thing we'll so it, the people can yeah so you, you know, can, can put it in your calendars and not be surprised oh where'd this come from yes june reviews and sunday's podcast whatever next sunday is at the same time which was i think noon eastern so yes and nine my time no ten ten my time ten ten your time um, um, noon uh, Eastern, 9 o'clock Pacific. Yes, well, we will prove that we can do time zones. 
Uh, and and uh, like this week, we'll start the the stream ten minutes early. So make sure everything's working. Make sure we can see and hear each other, and then just chit chat. But uh, and from speaking from experience, the, the the best and most peculiar, weird, entertaining things happen in those ten minutes before the show. So be generally there. Generally speaking, that is true. Um, yeah. So that's it for me. How about you? Yeah. All right. That's it for me as well. Thanks everyone for joining us, and until next week. Uh, this Bye. is us saying goodbye. Bye.